Within this tank lives a miniature world. Animals will adapt, partnerships will form, and life must face Mother Nature herself. The ocean is a dangerous place, but despite all odds, some animals have evolved to survive. It transformed from a barren wasteland into a thriving ecosystem. To understand the mysteries within, we must go back to day one, where it began with the tank, some rock, and a whole lot of sand. The water was initially cloudy, but as it began to clear, it revealed a hauntingly beautiful landscape. It was entirely lifeless, so I introduced Plankton, the bottom of the food chain. Over the first 10 days, I did nothing but let them multiply. Plankton may not look like much, but they are the foundation to all life on our planet. So they're kind of a big deal. On day 12, I introduced macroalgae. They are the equivalent to an underwater plant. They are covered in tiny snails and even the occasional starfish. Together, the plankton and algae will fuel the fire of life in the aquarium, starting with hermit crabs. Most of them explored the tank for pieces of debris and algae. Some of them were quite large, while this guy is smaller than the head of a penny. But this one had another idea. He was on the hunt for a new shell. Maybe this one will do. He had to inspect it for size, shape, and quality. And then he made the move. A perfect fit. We'll use this shell as a home for many months to come. By day 20, the snail population began to boom. They were taking over the rock work, the glass, and even began climbing out of the aquarium. Many of them harassed the hermit crabs, and the glass was covered in eggs. I had to stop them. It was time to introduce a snail predator. Meet the pistol shrimp, an expert snail hunter. I added him into the tank, but there is a catch. He is completely blind and the hermit crabs may try to eat him. He was outnumbered 10 to 1. He needed protection, and that is why he is not alone. These are goby fish. They have incredible eyesight and will protect him with their lives. In return, the shrimp will build them a home. But after adding them into the tank, they seem to have all vanished. But underground, they were building a fortress. They were safe. They were home. Meanwhile, above ground, the rock was looking barren and empty. It was time to introduce coral. They may just look like colorful rock, but with time, they begin to emerge. Coral serves as a refuge to life on the reef, and this jewel coral is no different. It is covered in holes that are home to a very special kind of worm. Christmas tree worms. They use colorful feathers to catch food passing by. But when they get scared, they disappear right back into the coral. I even added a few fish who will use the coral as a hunting ground and hideout. But in the evening, many of the coral began to close. 
the fish went into hiding, and night finally fell. The tank may look empty, so I got a dead anchovy. This fish has an irresistible smell that fills the aquarium. Zombie snails. They are attracted to the smell of blood. Pretty soon, the anchovy was completely surrounded. Even the hermit crabs joined in. All this commotion attracted something even bigger. A leopard snail. He is a snail eating snail, and the top predator in these waters. But in this case, he was just after the anchovy. He uses a retractable mouth to puncture the fish's skin. After a few hours, it was like nothing ever happened. By day 40, life was in full swing. The pistol shrimp spent all day digging out their burrow, while the goby stood guard. Meanwhile, the algae was growing rapidly. It was outgrowing the tank and taking over the rockwork. That is why I introduced a sea urchin. He will spend his whole life grazing on algae and keeping it at bay. But he was stopped in his tracks by a hermit crab. This hermit crab became a little too curious and went for a ride. Still, something in the aquarium was a little bit off. All of the coral began to close, and animals were taking shelter. They were doing so for good reason. I was about to simulate a hurricane. The storm left behind a dust cloud. The water column was filled with dirt and debris. But all of this debris was going to be food for sponges. They use hundreds of holes on their body to filter out the water. But this sponge is not like the rest. It began to move. That's because it is a sponge crab. He is in disguise. Unlike the sponges, he will not help filter the water. It was still cloudy and full of debris. That is why I added feather duster worms. They use these feathers on their head to filter and clean the water. But if they sense danger, they can vanish. By day 72, the reef had become a refuge for many forms of life. Every animal has its own role to play, and every animal has its own story to tell. For example, this sea slug was on a mission. I started with three of them, and now she is the last of her kind. But it was not her fate to die alone. She climbed to the top of the aquarium, where she began to lay. She created a spiral of hundreds and hundreds of eggs, in hopes of raising the next generation. Meanwhile, I decided to introduce an anemone. It is huge, it is destructive, it is a lot like my mother-in-law. Anemones are deceptively beautiful. 
Each tentacle packs a lethal sting that it uses to hunt. Watch what happens if I give it a fish. It pulls the fish to its mouth where it will be swallowed whole. In a few hours, there will be nothing left but a pile of bones. The other fish must be extremely careful or they will become a meal as well. But there is a fish that is immune to the deadly sting. Meet the clownfish. They have a special slime coat on their skin to protect them from the anemone. Within seconds of adding them in, they form an unbreakable bond. The anemone protects the clownfish, and in return, the clownfish will feed and keep it clean. During the day, the tank seems like a peaceful paradise. But as day sets to night, that all begins to change. All the fish are hiding, and for good reason. I added in some dead shrimp to bring out the nightlife. The snails emerged for their ritual hunt, and so did something new. Some animals are just better left a mystery. In the coming days, something incredible was about to begin. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor, BetterHelp, who is on a mission to make therapy more affordable and accessible because it is completely online. All you have to do is take an online quiz and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. You can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even via messaging. If the first therapist isn't a good fit, you can easily switch to a new one at no additional cost. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient to you. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash drplants for 10% off your first month. Using that link will give you a great discount and help support the channel. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. On day 94, the reef was ready for a new predator. Meet the hawkfish. He is an ambush predator. After adding him into the tank, he began the hunt. That is enough food for the day. Now as the sun began to set, the coral put on a show. They light up the night to attract plankton. There was a feeding frenzy. They were not the only ones to glow. The plankton do as well. It is one of the most breathtaking displays on our planet. And it made me realize that coral reefs in the wild must be even more beautiful. Or so I thought. Over half our coral reefs are now nothing more than a graveyard. The ones that we still have left are fading into memory. But it is not the end. There is still hope. And thanks to your support, I am donating $10,000 to the Coral Restoration Foundation. Here's another video of mine that you should definitely check out. 